Hey, Michael here for Beer Baseball oh. Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball <coughs> Blogcast, episode 14 for August 4th, 2020. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd always appreciate if you'd consider subscribing and turning on those notifications and even telling a friend. Uh, that would be awesome. All right, let's do the lineup card. First up, Angelo Trinidad, a fun fact, has been to 13 Major League Parks, 11 modern, and 2 extinct. Angelo, how are you doing today? Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. How's everyone doing? So what are the 2 extinct of uh, fields that you've been to? Uh, 2 extinct fields are Candlestick Park uh, and the Jack, Jack Murphy Stadium. Oh, right on. Right on. I've been to uh, Jack Murphy, but never to Candlestick, so that's pretty good. awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Next up is Kevin Lyon. Fun fact, he has been to 13 Major League Parks. Um, actually, take that back, 19. On my, on my list over here, it says 13, but that, that is wrong. Uh, 19, uh, 14 modern, five extinct. Do you? Do, uh, what are the five extinct ones you've been to? Well, two of them he's already mentioned. That would be Jack Murphy Stadium and Candlestick Park. Um, I went to the original Yankee Stadium, Shea Stadium, and one, I'm sure you're about to mention, the Astrodome. Oh, wow. I, I, I didn't even realize you've been there. I guess, yeah, I guess we have talked about that. Yes. That's awesome. Well, I, I've been to uh, 22 Major League oh, wow. Baseball Parks. My name is Michael Mondragon. Uh, I've been to 19 Modern, uh, 3 Extinct, uh, the Astrodome, uh, Bush Stadium 2, uh, the one with the AstroTurf that took out uh, Vince Coleman. Um, and the other one, it would be uh, Qualcomm or Jack Murphy Stadium. Uh, so yeah, so I was, hopefully it was going to hit a whole bunch of them this year, but womp womp. Yeah. Yeah. So, so be it. You can still hit them up. There's no, you know, you just can't get in. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually can. Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take the, the uh, stadium tour. Oh, there's no, none of that either. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so let's start out with, uh, what you're drinking tonight. Um, I'm actually going to add a little caveat and I will definitely put this in here. Uh, it's going to be, what are you drinking? What are you wearing? Uh, because we all wear pretty unique caps and uh, shirts, so I think that we should definitely uh, pay some uh, homage to them uh, to use a brand name that uh, that we've we've. Uh, so let's see, is it homage.com? Yep, Angelo. Homage, yeah, homage.com. Yeah, there you go. So let's start out with uh, Kevin Lyon. Oh yes. All right. So what I have here, I have, here's my growler this week. It is called Bounce. It's by a brewery called Brewery West. They're out of San Pedro, California. Uh, just on the air side of Long Beach, if you guys don't know where San Pedro is. Haven't had a chance to go there yet. I was hoping to, but for, for a personal level, because they actually were doing like like concerts, like shows out there. <clears throat> like last, I think it was last year or so, they had the the old punk band X from the LA area playing. And I'm like, ooh, that'd be really cool to go. But because of work, I couldn't get out there. So, and now who knows if I'll ever get out to a brewery like that. Yeah, Let's and uh, whenever I see this, it, it's it's pronounced brewery. Am I correct? Even though it ends with an I J. As far as I know, yes. I've never yeah. had anybody talk to me, but the way it reads, I must. <clears throat> I'm just at brewery West. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't um, see if it had a different phonetic spelling, um, but thank you. And it's, it has Citra, Mosaic, uh, Centennial mm -hmm. hops, pine, citrus, and passion fruit. So yeah, I, that's definitely one I like to uh, get. I had a couple other ones that I've had from them before that have always been really good. So we should definitely check that out. Um, 
next time we're in San Pedro. Yes. And I know they usually have, they had one lately of theirs. I don't remember which one at Trader Joe's because we all talk about Trader Joe's all the time. Yeah. All right. Next up is Angela with a very interesting one that I like a lot. All right. So tonight I'm drinking from Two Pitchers Brewing Co. in San Francisco, uh, the Rattler. It is their grapefruit lager uh, with the hint of blood wow. orange. Um, and because uh, why not? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it says um, it's uh, Two Pitchers Rattler is a refreshingly crisp Bavarian style blend of lager and grapefruit juice with a hint of blood orange for good measure. Um, good. The, the grapefruit flavor is definitely very apparent. Uh, but it, um, I think the blood orange kind of um, r- removes kind of that tart flavor of the grapefruit, which I think is really, really nice. So it's a nice blend. Uh, definitely, this would be a great beachside or poolside uh, beer, um, but a little bit on the uh, a little bit on the the sweeter side, more sweet than like the um, the the Twenty First Amendment Hell or High Watermelon I tried. A l- way sweeter than Mango Cart by Golden Road Brewing. Um, so not something that I would drink uh, every day, but this one is uh, pretty tasty. 5.1 ABV with no IBU listed, uh, probably because the grapefruit juice kind of outweighs the uh, the hoppiness in the beer. So, but cheers. Yeah, that's for sure. I've had that one before. Um, I think I even had had it in one of my videos, uh, my uh, baseball card opening uh, one. I loved it a lot. I actually got... Uh, I got hip to it by a friend of mine who just gave it to me and I, it was two pitchers brewing. So I was like, either it's like a pitcher of beer or it's, uh, it was actually pitchers, which actually it is. Yep. Uh, th- there are two, br- uh, two, uh, friends who are baseball college pitchers. Uh, okay. I don't, I'm not sure for what college, I don't think it's like a, a division one college, but wow. they played in college and they went on to do this. Uh, definitely worth checking out. If you ever see this, uh, I wouldn't say that it's like a beer, I think it's mm-hmm. more like uh, um, it's it's it is the grapefruit is is very overwhelming in it, but not in a bad way. And yeah, it's, but it's very refreshing. Yeah, I so. think um, the now that I've drank a little bit more of it, the the best way to really describe it, it's it it tastes a lot like a like if I were to be drinking a grapefruit mimosa, kind of I guess. Yeah. So yeah, more, it's, it's it's way on the lighter side, way on the lighter side. Yeah, if you're looking for a beer, this is probably not it, but this, but it's it's worth checking out because it's very refreshing, uh, yep. as long as you know what you're getting into. Can I ask where did you find it? Uh, Ralph's. Oh, okay. Yeah. All so right. the last, so the last two um, I found, so this one and the green, uh, the green flash um, mm-hmm. brewing from last week, I both found okay. at Ralph's. Cool. And and uh, what are you wearing, real quick? Oh, so I'm wearing uh, my baseball, my baseballism tee, uh, the timeless tee. So this has the graphic on the front. It also has the same graphic on the back. It's called the timeless tee. So it's a, it's an hourglass uh, sitting horizontally. So time is kind of frozen with the baseball uh, in on one side. And I have my baseballism limited edition um, 2020 home opener. Oh, uh, nice. All right. Right on. Right on. Hey. Uh, Michael, we forgot. I forgot to mention the, the what I was wearing. I don't know. Okay, go for it. So this shirt is the Hawaii Islanders, 1961. This shirt is that they were actually a team in the old. Well, actually, the old. Their team for a while in the Pacific Coast League. Right. And this is actually made by Ebbets Field Flannery Flannel out of a uh, Seattle area. Yep. And the hat, the NH is for the uh, Nippon Ham Fighters. This was known as the team that Shohei Yotani played for when he was in Japan. So when he came to the Angels, it was a good gift from somebody. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And we have a lot of we have a lot of people out there, which I'll acknowledge in just a second after I get after my beer, which is the Santan Brewing oh. Company out of Chandler, Arizona, the Moon Juice IPA. It's a galactic IPA, 7.3 ABV, 65 IBU. And uh, this is a beer that I would get at Chase Field uh, at, at the Arizona Diamondbacks. It was gifted to me by my friend Kevin Ziegler, who I played high school baseball with, who is uh, actually in the comments, uh, and, and shout, shouted out my uh, my other nickname that I have, uh, Mongo, for my last name, Mondragon. And so that's uh, I always say that's my sports name uh, that people know me as. And actually, uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to actually have a second beer from Hus Brewing Company in Tempe, Arizona. And this, yeah, this is the uh, Papago Desert Sage uh, IPA. And this beer I actually had 
when I went to Goodyear, Arizona for the uh, uh, Cincinnati Reds, in the spring training, they actually oh. had this beer and it usually goes with a little bit of orange. I'm not a big, I'm putting fruit in my beer, so I like it straight, but I've actually had this beer in 2018. So I'm very happy to have both these beers. And actually, Kevin gave me a whole bunch of other ones that I'm going to be premiering uh, as well in the coming weeks. And I am wearing, uh, this is a baseballism shirt. This is uh, from Scottsdale, Arizona. They have like their own branding. So I have Mm -hmm. my Arizona shirts go with my Arizona beers. And I was going to have an Arizona affiliate, but uh, my caps don't fit too well because of my COVID hair. So uh, I actually went with the Norwich Sea Unicorns. Uh, What's that? This used to be the Connecticut Tigers. They were a short season single A for the mm-hmm. Tigers. And and they, they were going to uh, debut this this year. And because of the season, they didn't get to. Oh, no. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a bummer. I was like, wow. Because oh, no, I was thinking, was Connecticut? Was that one of the teams you – was that one of the teams you – oh, I'm thinking yep. of Hartford. Okay. No, I no, I went. I went to Connecticut. I saw a game there. Hartford is where oh, I went. Yeah. And they, it was after the season. So right. the Yard yeah. Goats. Okay. the one that, that I eventually right. want to go to that. So, yes, yes, um, very good. Yeah. All angels podcast is in the house. Thank you so much hey. for joining. Uh, Ed is out there too many extinct parks for this dinosaur to count. That is for sure. Uh, Chad M, uh, our benefactor. And I'm, I'm going to get my package out to you, Chad M. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for being patient. I'm going to get it out to you. Um, Jason Schaefer, uh, cheers from Seattle, enjoying a summer pale ale from Fremont Brewing. Very nice. Yeah. Thank What's you for here? joining. They're based out of the Seattle area. The one I've had, I found out here is their Lush IPA. I've seen that readily available down here. In a couple, if you right. Places. Oh, yes. I've seen that too. That's, that's why I know that. I see that mm-hmm. a lot of time at Whole Foods here. Yeah. Uh, All Angels Podcast, uh, loves the, the Nordic Jam from Two Pitchers. Oh, so I'll have to check that, that out as well. All right. <clears throat> and uh and uh michael long hair don't care yeah uh, <laughs> my, my hair, oh my god my hair is like i i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but uh yeah all right so let th- because we could do a whole like oh, two episodes on today's this this day in baseball history for august 4th and uh it is a it is a big one so let's get to it right away August 4th, 1968, a 10-foot bronze statue of Stan Musial is unveiled at Bush Stadium after the 6-5 extra inning loss to Chicago in front of a capacity crowd. In a pregame ceremony honoring Stan the Man, the seven-time NL batting champ is joined by his 1941 teammates. Uh, oh, wow. I, we, we started with Stan Musial uh, last week. We're yep. starting with him this week. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Oh. I have heat with this statue. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I feel that this statue is maybe one of the worst statues ever. And it, it's, I, I, I don't want to sound controversial because I understand it's honoring the man and, and everything. Yeah. But if you actually look at this from different angles, as you can see it here, uh, the legs are quite short. The, yeah. the body yeah. is quite top heavy. Uh, yeah. the proportionate, the por- proportioning of the statue is, is, is really obvious when you, when you look at it up close. In fact, there's been a lot some articles on it about how they, some, they, they should really update the statue, uh, as a typography nerd, uh, the, the, the writing here, the ellipsis, that's the, the three dots. That's what that's called. Uh, and the, the quotes are all wrong. And, uh, and it's like, it starts in the middle of a sentence. I, there could be some more attention to detail thrown in here. And I know I'm splitting hairs, but this, this is, uh, this statue is actually not the best representation of what, who I think Stan the Man is. Although I, again, I'm going to be controversial about it. There, there's an, actually a smaller statue. This is a picture I took in 2005 in the last games of uh, Bush Stadium 2, one of the extinct, extinct stadiums that I, that I visited. And uh, it's a little bit better, uh, but it, it actually more ca- uh, captures Stan the Man and his swing and, and just like this, everything about it is more dynamic as well. So uh, I wanted to get your guys' opinion. I know this is probably harsh to, you know, it, it's granted it, it's it's giving him a uh, purpose and, and uh, really honoring the man, but I think it could have been a better job. Oh, absolutely. But you know what? If you want to really honor him, I think you need to get a statue of that photo you showed us last week. 
of him at spring training with the three women. <laughs> yes, yeah, that would be that. That, that would. I agree. I agree. Man, not for you know, for just being Stan the man. That's a, a pure example of Stan the man himself. One of the best players ever in it. Gosh, I was like, yeah. that's how you represent him. We have all giving that all over the country. Don't want to take down the Stan Mutual statue. <laughs> and it, it is yeah. controversial because I'm a Cardinal fan too. So I know, I know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you, Mike. The, the same things about that statue that that bother you are bothering me. The first thing I when you when that picture popped up is like, why is his body so disproportionate? Yeah. Um, and secondly, you know, I'm I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure that's. I mean, that's a you know, an excerpt from that, I guess the, the, his retirement. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess the, yeah. The but retirement at, ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, they, they could have done something better than doing not even a complete sentence. <laughs> right. So, I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're, if you're going to be etched in the annals of history forever, you, yeah. you'd figure they, uh, they'd want to you know do something <laughs> a little yeah. bit. And it's, uh, it's been around for 52 years, right? Right. And I, I, it looks as if they, I don't necessarily know if they, they rushed it or they just didn't put a lot of, uh, they didn't put a lot of effort into it. I don't know yeah. what it is. Are so Matt, both still at um, the new stadium? Are they both at the current Bush Stadium? Yes. They moved him over oh, to the new, new okay. stadium. So I, I love it. I love that Matt Massingham uh, said, when did Mike turn in the angry, um, get angry, get off my lawn, man. You know, uh, I've always been that guy to be, <laughs> I've, always, I've never, I've never projected it. I'm like, Wah. Yeah, He's probably. done that for you, Matthew, to get off his lawn. So you're okay. All Angels podcast. It looks like he skipped his leg day. I... <laughs> yeah. And he looks a little, he looks a little, uh, his knees are like bent. In. It, it's weird. Man. Yeah. It's just, it's just not the perfect, uh, uh, for an iconic player, not the perfect yeah. uh, statue. All right. Um, a very happy birthday to my longtime friend, Matt Harper, who was born 50 years ago today. Uh, Matt, Paul Dever, and myself do a live pumpkin carving show on, on YouTube on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, look up Carvers and Creators on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Matt and I saw a few Padres game at Jack Murphy, and we almost got in a fight with a Marine. True story. So, um, That's awesome. if you, if you, uh, <laughs> we'll have to get Matt on the show so you guys can fully discuss that story. Yes. yes yeah. If, if you, if you, if you've never been to any San Diego sporting event and yeah. not almost gotten into a fight with Marine, you've never, you've never really lived. Yeah. As a, it's not, as the experience has not been fulfilled. That's for darn sure. Yeah. I only almost got into a fight with the prior, uh, mascot because I was, Oh, I, I, I remember that too. We'll have yeah. to talk about well, that another time. Well, yeah. while we're on the while we're on the birthday topic, um, uh, happy birthday to a friend of the show, Doctor James Morgan, oh, uh, right who's on. a huge uh, huge Dodgers fan. So I don't know if you're watching uh, this evening, James. I'm sure you're enjoying the time with your family. But happy birthday from all of us to you. Salud, cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers Matt. All right, on August fourth, nineteen seventy one, just a year later after Matt was born. In a Texas League contest, Tommy Walker hurls a 15-inning wow. no-hitter, beating the Albuquerque Dukes 1-0. Uh, wow. The, the Dallas-Fort Worth Spurs right-hander faces only 47 batters during the minor league game, two oh. over the minimum, which is wow. absolutely insane. one nothing, no less. One. Like this is double-A baseball, by the way, Texas League. Like, how bad are these two teams? So, oh so let's God. look. Let's look at the Dallas Fort Worth Spurs. Oh, wow! So Thank here you. they are, and they they were only in existence from sixty five to seventy one. They played in Turnpike Stadium in Arlington, Texas, Double A Texas League, as Kevin said. They were actually uh, affiliates for the Cubs, Astros, and for uh, three years, sixty nine through seventy one, uh, Baltimore Orioles. Interesting. So. so now Oh, because in that picture of him, he's wearing an Expo. Right, movie. right. So I think that they went away from, uh, they actually, uh, they went somewhere else. I, I can't, I oh, didn't remember where. But, that app. but during their affiliation with Baltimore, the Spurs featured Don Baylor, Enos oh, Cabell, wow. who is yeah. pictured here. He was in the yeah. uh, Bad News Bears that we uh, saw before. And uh, and uh, Bobby Gritch. Oh, wow. Circle wow. right there. 
and the manager, Cal Ripken Sr. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was talking trash on the team, but they may have scored one run that game. That's right. So was- and they ha- they had a Hall of Fame bat boy, Cal Ripken oh. Jr. Oh wow. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So that's funny. So I went, you know, they, so they went for, I went how the other pitchers did because it was zero, zero after 14 innings, you know, what a crazy yeah. game. That was. Yeah. They probably pitched two pitchers. <laughs> that's yeah. the way it was back then. They, they, yeah, they exactly. didn't worry about pitch counts or anything like that. All right. August 4th, 1982, after driving in the winning run, uh, in the Mets seven to four victory over the Cubs, Joel Youngblood, who is traded to the Expos during the game, flies to Philadelphia and singles for Montreal to become the first player to have a hit for two different teams on the same day in different cities. Wow. Out, outstanding. Oh. I, and I love this card because I totally remember this card as well. I love well. that card, yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely have that card. <laughs> That's awesome. August 4th, 1983, a day that will live in an infamy. Uh, Dave Winfield kills a seagull at Exhibition Stadium with a warm-up throw prior to the home fifth inning. After the 3-1 victory over the Blue Jays, the Yankee outfielder is arrested by the Ontario police and charged with animal cruelty. So they... I don't, Sorry. Did they th- did they think that he did it on purpose? Like that that's that's even more insane. So or yeah. maybe like there isn't really any video account of this. So maybe he did. I I'm not saying that he did though. Um, he was released after posting a $500 bond. Yankee manager Billy Martin quipped, "It's the first time he's at the cutoff man all season." Yes. Oh my god. Thank you, Billy Martin. Oh my oh, god, man. Charges were dropped the following day. Uh, there's not a lot of footage on this. Uh, and, and so the very, I couldn't even get like YouTube footage, but there was some like, uh, Twitter footage with some, uh, CBC is that the Canadian broadcasting yeah. company. They mm-hmm. had some footage on there, but it was, it was too hard to get in. Um, but let's talk about, let's talk about Dave Winfield. Uh, Kevin, oh, yeah. what, it, what, what college did he go to? Oh gosh. You had to do this to me. Cause, cause if I remember right, he was like the number one draft. Wait, he didn't go to college. Nice try. Didn't he like not when he straight out of high school? Well, no, no you got me. No, see, the, you you are you you're remembering it, but you're remembering it kind of incorrectly. All there right. is some there is something some tangle to that. Yes. I, I knew it wasn't just a straight you went to this college. Any, any idea, Angelo? No idea. He went to the University of Minnesota. Oh, okay. Now uh wow. the San Diego Padres selected him as the as a pitcher fourth overall. Um, in the MLB draft. So, but he was also drafted by the Atlanta Hawks of the NBA, the Utah Stars of the ABA, and the Minnesota Vikings. Wow. In the 17th round, they took a chance on him uh, because he came, uh, he grew up in St. Paul, I believe. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah, I would assume they did this. Wow. And I, ironically, won his only World Series championship with Toronto, the team oh. uh, that. Uh, or the team he played against when he got that seagull incident. Yeah, that's right. So Cowboy was- Cowboy Jack Durango said the seagull had it coming. <laughs> All right. So yeah, and I was watching some highlights of um, of Dave Winfield. He was also 6'6", which is the same height as my friend Matt Harper. See, it all comes around. It, it all comes around. <laughs> uh, so did, now- do you remember? Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to ask, are you going to... What's the end? Are you going to get to the end point? Like, what ended up happening? Did he end up going to Minnesota? Uh, you know, to to um, to uh, Minnesota. Did he go to, well, how long did he play at University of Minnesota? Or oh, I don't he? know. I know that he did. He did. I okay, believe, I, I okay. believe he did. Yeah, I'll try to remember because because he started with the Padres. That's why I was asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he was uh, drafted out of college from um, Minnesota. Right. Okay, so. Um, Next up, again, we could do so many, so many days on this. This is insane. Now, this day is is amazing. August fourth, nineteen eighty five, in a four to one complete game victory at Yankee Stadium, Chicago White Sox White Sox right hander Tom Seaver becomes becomes the seventeenth player in Major League Baseball history to record his three hundredth victory, limiting the Bronx Bombers to six hits, all singles. Wow. 
Yankees owner George Steinbrenner becomes irate when the fans ch uh, start chanting, let's go Mets, an homage to the beloved right-hander who spent 12 years uh, with his yeah. team's crosstown rivals. Yeah. So there's a, there's a great, and, and actually I need to put it on the playlist uh, of him uh, getting that victory and everybody's like cheering for him uh, because yeah, in, in New York, he was uh, oh, yeah. definitely, definitely a hero. Uh, Ooh, Kevin, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Where did Tom Seaver go to college? I have no idea, sir. I'm sorry. He, he went to USC. Oh, okay. Wow. Which, oh, I just I which I just found out about because I was over there uh, by uh, Dato Field, and they have okay. a big uh, thing up to him, which I didn't know oh. either. All right, so uh, I'm going to play uh, a video here because oh. this also happened before the game. cartoonist of the New York Daily News. Uh, All right. So the Yankees, uh, before the game, honor Yankee great Phil Rizzuto, a player and an announcer for the Yankees by retiring... Uh, uh, the broadcaster's oh, uniform number 10. The scooter, known for his expression, holy cow, is knocked knocked down in a pregame ceremony uh, by a fitting gift by the team, a cow wearing a halo. And that 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 little clip was on every blooper reel. And I, don't and that. I remember seeing that so many times. I didn't know what it was from. And wow. uh, it was from, and it was before this 300th uh, career win by... Tom Seaver. So I yeah. hope he didn't mess the shoot up, but if he did, hopefully he can go to the money store and you know get the money. <laughs> Phil Rizzuto for the money yeah. store. Yes. You only know that if you if you listen to it. Uh, yeah, this is this is for an old guy. Uh, this is this was an this was an awesome one to see that happen oh, today. Oh, not great. not to be outdone. Another thing happened on this day, August fourth, nineteen eighty five, at Anaheim Stadium, California Angel. Uh, Angels first baseman Rod Carew singles off Minnesota southpaw Frank Viola in the third inning to become to become the 16th major leaguer to amass 3,000 hits. Yes. Ironic because that he uh, was with the Minnesota Twins uh, mm -hmm. before this in his career. Yeah. So very very fitting. Uh, Frank Viola, great pitcher. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm bummed because I didn't go that day, but I remember watching the game on TV because we didn't have season seats by then, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah. And an angel. Great. Uh, oh, angel. Gosh, uh, great. did you ever yep. see him play at all? Or do you, do you watch any highlights with him playing highlights for sure? Um, he was, um, I believe I was at when he was, uh, honored in the, um, the angels hall of fame. Um, or maybe he was there at a game, you know, being honored for something. I, I don't recall, but yeah, I mean, definitely one of the, uh, one of the greats uh, to play. I mean, obviously, you know, that, that stat speaks for itself. 16th yeah. major leaguer in history to amass 3000 hits. And, you know, um, I feel like now it's, it's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to necessarily say it's easier, <laughs> but um, uh, definitely uh, careers seem that they're a little bit more longer now than, than back then. Um, they're, Cause they're playing, you know, I mean, they're playing every day and not really getting ton tons of rest, but you know, uh, definitely one of the all-time greats. Definitely. Yeah, and he, All Angels podcast yeah. loves it. Go for, go for it, Kevin. Yeah, I remember the next year, he's out. Wally joins in. So as a kid, oh, even though Wally started hot that next year, it's like he's replacing Juan Carew. And it's just like, uh, and he had that incredible, like, first half of 86. And then he was still good, but he never re he never got to that level again because Wally was yeah. running wild. And That's right. Said, that's right. Yeah. Wally world. Like, I want Rod Carew back. <laughs> yeah. He was done, but he was done after this, you know. Oh, August yeah, the 4th. main event. Yes. <laughs> the main event. August 4th, 1993. After being hit by a Nolan Ryan fastball, Robin Ventura charges the mound to get at the 46 year old pitcher. 
Nolan Ryan responds by putting the White Sox third baseman in a headlock and punches him six time, much to the pleasure of the Texas Rangers fan at Arlington Stadium. Kevin? Yes, sir. Tell me about, yeah. well, tell me about Robin Ventura, and then we'll get to um, maybe some of his brain power uh, in this one. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think of like, Juan well, Ventura for a while was a hell of a ball player. A hell of a player. And unfortunately, his legacy is just completely tarnished because of this moment. Because, you know, thinking back, this guy was like, he's actually in the College Baseball Hall of Fame. And you know what? Part of this anger might be because he went to Oklahoma State. And, you know, Texas, Oklahoma is, you know. Oh, even, right. It, you know, that might be like, hey, wait a minute. You are you were a cowboy at OS, you know, Oklahoma yeah. State. Might have a little extra oomph on there, you know. Because Texas, Oklahoma is always a natural rivalry. But um, something as crazy is that he, not only that, but at Oklahoma State, he actually, he had a hit, the hitting streak, 58-game hitting wow. streak. It's a Division One record, I believe, it, while he was Oklahoma State. And he's mm-hmm. actually on the uh, Indian Olympic team, which won a gold medal back when, you know, you know and that was a big deal back then, right yeah. before he became gold. He was a great player. Like, you had him at third and Frank Thomas at first base in the White Sox. That was one of the one of the, the best, like, first base, first base, third base in combo that period, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but then, you know, you ask anybody, like, oh, yeah, the guy got punched by Nolan Ryan. <laughs> right. That's, that's be his baseball legacy. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, in, in that game for the White Sox, uh, Bo Jackson was the designated hitter leading off. Oh, my God. Um, there's wow. – in the video clip uh, that will go in our playlist, uh, like Mick, uh, Mickey Hatcher was, I believe, a coach for them at that time. Got well, He was exactly. bleeding from the head. There, And uh, this also um, – surprisingly, oh Ryan God. was not ejected from this game. <laughs> and, and, and he actually pitched seven innings, giving up one earned run – and three hits. Wow. But it made for one of the greatest baseball pictures of all time. Yeah. So this must have been, I mean, like had to be uh, innings, uh, innings later. Right. Because it, it definitely, I don't even. Oh, do we know it, what, did it say what point the, the pitch was when he hit him? Do you remember uh, what, and, and I think it was, was well, uh, Ventura actually hit, uh, I believe a single to score two uh, in okay. the first inning. So okay. it might have been either the second or the third. So, okay. but I, I, I didn't know right away. But I mean, this was incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He probably it's probably one of those things where he had it and then he just like it, you know started fiddling with it and all of a sudden, poof, just yeah. just went out. Yeah. But it was it's a it's one of the greatest pictures of all time. Do, do you have any? Uh, have you ever seen this uh, before, Angelo? Yeah. Is this on your radar? <laughs> yeah. This is. Um, I mean, much like much like uh, last was it last week we did, we talked about the George Brett incident pine tar incident yep. this is yep. one of uh this is one of the most you know famous moments in baseball history um and um the only thing uh, i can think of in this is man like a uh, good thing the uh the catcher didn't get the ball back to nolan ryan because i have a feeling that as ventura would have been charging him nolan would have <laughs> would have yeah, just ch- ch- chucked, chucked one right out. That was Pudge. By, that was uh, Ivan Rodriguez. Yeah. I saw Ivan Rodriguez. Yeah. But the, the 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 best part about that clip is like, man, I think Robin Ventura knew as soon as he yeah. charged in and got put in that headlock, he knew, man. And I could just, I could just, I could just hear him as he's getting punched. You know, go light, brother. Yeah. Go light. Yeah. <laughs> it it seemed it seemed like a good idea in foul territory. Once he got uh, uh, to the mound, like his foot touched the dirt, he goes, ah, maybe not so much. You see, he just kind of leans into him a little bit. More just kind of like to give him a like a, a, a hip bump or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. He has in, you know. And no one could probably just say, oh, I was defending myself. I like, what? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. <laughs> that he didn't get kicked out or anything. Is that, is like, that's the part I don't remember. Like, wow. Because yeah. literally it's like, you put the headlock and don't do anything. Can you imagine yeah. how much he was suspended now if he did that? That's you know Good that's God. that's a, that's insane that uh, that he didn't get ejected, but yeah. yet you know today someone can get ejected for not even hitting someone. So yeah, the, I mean the rules or have can get really suspended. <laughs> the rules have really changed for all that. Uh, you know, and, and even uh, I saw a play that happened today, or uh, might have been yesterday, where it was a rundown and they were. Uh, the catcher was blocking a plate. It was in the oh, Padres, Tatis, Dodgers. Tatis yeah. and, uh, and Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. And they were saying like that, that the catcher was potentially blocking the plate and he yep. was like mm-hmm. about, you know, 
five or 10 feet, you know, in front of the plate. And it's like, that's, that's a rule now. So it's like, it's, it's really odd how like all these logistics have changed the game considerably. All right. So, uh, again, we could have done, we, there's a whole second day of just this day in baseball history for August 4th. Hopefully next year it'll pop up again. So maybe we could even uh, talk about it some more. But we are actually going to jump to Baseball Pack Wars. Right. As always, we get our cards from Hall of Fame Baseball Cards in Arcadia, California, except for the ones that will denote Chad M. You're the best. Thank you for uh, letting us get some of the Series 2 tops. I actually changed the order of this. Here are the Pack War standings. Uh, oh. Kevin coming on strong, hitting 400. Wow, 400. 400. Gosh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Angelo up uh, up over the Mendoza line. Uh, All right. That's a baseball reference. Are you familiar with the Mendoza line, Angelo? Yes. Um, ah, yes. Very, very good. So uh, we'll actually talk. I want to talk about the Mendoza line uh, more for people that don't know. I, I love talking about uh, baseball minutia like that. So uh, these are the baseball card pack wars rules. We're going to open your pack. A relic card knocks out one participant of a choice. An autograph card knocks out two. After all packs are open, high number card wins. Collectively, we drink when we get a Brewer's card. That means you at home, too. Uh, if you have uh, Pepsi, milk, water, uh, but if you're drinking uh, a beverage, cheers. And number six, uh, Cowboy Jack Durango drinks after every card. That yeah. I, I need to add that as a little supplemental, a <laughs> uh, little asterisk. Right there. So let's get to it. Uh, who wants to go first? Let's go with uh, Kevin. He's in the lead. Oh, so I'm Kevin's in the, in the lead. lead. All right. Well, let's do. Um, we'll do the opening day first. I, we have two packs for that, so we're gonna do two at once here because those have left cards, and then we realize like, oh, we have more of these than the rest, so we do two for one on these. And there are seven cards in these as opposed to fourteen in the others. Right. So let me get both these open really quick. Here, all right. Let's see, what we got these together. All right, From the uh, Oakland Athletics, Liam Hendricks, Yuli Guriel, Otani Shohei. To match my hat. There you go. Jorge Polanco. Oh, oh, no, sorry. I saw the M and I got examining. Like, nope, Miley Marlins, Garrett Cooper. Oh, I got it. Oh, wow. Ooh, I got to check this out here. This is a uh, Mookie Betts. Check this one out. It has the date on it. Oh, there nice. Oh, like a little chrome card. Is it out yeah. of 2020? Is it numbered out of 2020 on the back? There is actually no number that I see on here. Oh, wow. Because there is um, the opening day stamp on here. Uh, March, I don't know. Baseball star, we learned that. Leave it out the side here. And I have a opening day Miami Marlins. We got Tim Anderson from the White Sox. Lebe Torres from Los Yankees. Cattell Marte from the D-backs. Oh, interesting. This man comes up quite often. Unfortunately, we can't drink on this one. Trent Grisham on the Padres. <laughs> we can, we can spill a beer in his honor. Yeah, I'm not spilling any like <laughs> You get bad here to, to, to spill, and I'll do that. Uh, Blake Clevenger, Nick Denzel, and my opening day, Los Doyers. All right, Angel, you're up. All right, Cowboy Jack Durango says, "Hell yeah, what is the drink?" Sorry, I didn't get any beers, Jack. I'll All right. On. Aaron Judge, Lourdes Guriel Jr. Get your beers ready. Oh, Chris thank you. Yeah. Adbert Al Alzole, Tommy Pham, Zach Gallen. And spring has sprung. Clayton Kershaw. Nice. Next pack. Bubble Pug says, "I don't think I'll ever forget that wild card game." She's a Brewers fan. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. That's right. We got a nice uh, Bo Bichette rookie. 
You say Kikuchi? Kikuchi, Kikuchi you say. Sorry. JD Martinez, Matthew Boyd, Jordan Yamamoto, Jose Barrios, and Spring has sprung Vlad Jr. Right on. All right, I am up. All right, what do you got for us? First pack of opening day 2020, Anthony Rendon. Oh, there you go. Is my thing not focusing? Wow. It is not focusing. Good times. No, not really. It's all right. We know who it is. <laughs> Brian Reynolds. Uh, Ed Alberto Mondesi. Jose Ramirez. Gregory Polanco. Uh, Victor Robles. And opening day, San Diego Padres. All right, Petco. Yeah. Oh, my God. Parking oh, God, I just want to go back to Petco Wah. Park and have some of that beer. Wow. Arestinis Aquino. Nico Goodrum, Jordan Alvarez, Scott Kingery. Whoop, anyway. The dog likes our uh, likes our yeah. sticks. Is that Tobias? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's Walter. Oh, okay. I've been here. I thought okay. Kyle Seeger. I can't believe this thing isn't focusing. Oh well. Uh, Starlin Castro. And oh, uh, there's a baseball bat chandelier that we talked about from Safeco. Did oh, I, nice. did I miss? Or now T Mobile Park. Yes. Not the Kingdom? <laughs> I wish the Kingdom. I wish. I wish I got a game. All kingdom. right, Kevin, what's your high, high one? All right, this is a pretty good one. Um, I'm not going to spill a beer in his honor, but Trent Grisham is one, number 190. Ooh. Because we know, I know there's no May Machado, so 190 is the card to beat so far. Jose Barrios, 199. Oh! oh. Kill card. Yeah, Very that good. might do it. Yeah, I don't even I know. I think that I, will do it. Unless you, the close, you know, the closest, I only have 181. Angelo, yeah. coming on strong. Yeah, I thought, I thought I'd have a winner there. Good job. Nice job. You're up, Angelo. Great job. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do top series one. Yes. All right. Keep in mind, I have not gotten my autograph or relic yet. And wow. there's a, and there's a, this is this is one of three packs left. So, mind you, I think uh, Michael and I both have two left. Or no, I think I have more left than you, but I already got my relic. So, good luck. Julio Tehran, DJ LeMahieu, Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper. Michael Givens, Starlin Castro, Jordan Yamamoto, Marco Gonzalez, Lewis Thorpe, Gene Segura, Atlanta Braves team card. George Springer, Jake Rogers, and oh yeah, I got my uh, autograph right. here, which is an there awesome is. card. Oh, Gavin Lux rookie. <laughs> there you go, nice. I, that's either the fifty-five or fifty-six. Fifty-six, yep. Fifty-six. Okay, very good. Fake autograph. Fake. Oh, we're done. Autograph. This round's over. We're done, Michael. No. Fake autograph for both of us. That's not. It's not. It's not the real autograph, though. Oh, it's not. No. It's oh no, it's not. It's reproduced. Ah, oh. dang it. Ah. Oh. Ba da 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 da. That's. I got really. I got really excited. <laughs> I was like, "We're done. Great. He's yeah. gonna be out of track, and there's like five left. Oh, that sucks. I'm it sorry. usually would say tops authentic autograph or yep, something yep, to that effect. Yep. Ah. Yeah. So it's that the year 50, 55, You say fifty six. What you're 56, that 56. I think those all had um, replica autographs on them. I yeah. know right. Right. I they did that. All right. Uh, you're up, Kevin. 
Oh, I'm up. All right. If I get a relic, I'm going to get like kicked out of the show, I think. I think Ansley have ejected. I, I already have mine. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Aria and Tobias said that Tobias's bark has evolved, which is my oh, dog. Oh. It's actually <laughs> Angela's dog. And um, Chad M wants to see those auto and relics. Me, me too, definitely. But yeah. actually, I don't want to see them. I, 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 well, if you, if you, you want to see them if you get them. Yeah. yeah you already, already got yours. Though. Yeah, he got his. I got mine. Angel supposedly still has his, but he has two backs left. But somewhere in one of these Series 2s, one of us has one. So let's That's see what happens. True. And I think, now, I, I think you got a Zach Gallon, maybe. Uh, and there's a, a Jack Durango. Yeah. Asked if, I got, Zach Gowan, baseball Gallen, player. Yes. Now God. there was a, a Jim Abbott had, only had one, like, one hand, but I've never seen like yeah. one with. Has there been a player with one foot? One let no, not the where Pete Gray was the player of one arm back in the day. You know. Wow. Okay, go for it, Kevin. All right. Uh, is it a uh, is it Jamer or Hamer Candelario? We got Brendan, oops, sorry, Brendan McKay, Jake uh, Marisnik, Patrick Sandoval, Reese who's McGuire. Who's, Patrick Sandoval, funny enough, I just found out is good friends with my new neighbor. Oh, there you go. They, play, wow. they, played, uh, they played baseball together at uh, Mission Viejo High, I think. Very good. Also, he's a local. Very good. Yep. All right, speaking of angels, Matt Thais, Dan Vogelbach, Jacob uh, Wogs Talk. I never heard of this no, gentleman, but that's an interesting last name. Wow, this is the Angels pack. I got the Angels team card. Nice. And then after that, it gets ruined by, I'm sorry, what did I just say? It's the Doyers, uh, Hollywood Heroes, Outfield Celebrate Victory. <laughs> and finally, Another Brewer card at last. <laughs> big air, big hair. Brewer celebrate a walk off in. Get your drinks. Finally. Right, so that's the drink one. Up. No, Jack. Sorry, Cowboy Jack. We can't keep up with you anyway, but we'll see our best. Well, Cowboy Jack is um, now now he's uh, he's shotgunning beers. <laughs> All right. Well, you shotgun it when we get a Brewer. How about we do that? Oh, Let's God. try that. <laughs> and then I have a so uh, it's 19 a save or the beer. Uh, yes, that's true. 1960s, decades best, New York Yankees. There we oh, go. that's cool. Very cool. And uh, Nelson Cruz. And Yoan Makana. All right. Nice. Uh, Michael, you're up. All right. Uh, All Angels Podcast says, Angela, hook it up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely have to connect on that. It's it's funny because he's the one that pointed it out to me too. Yep. He, I I he, I didn't solicit any. He was just he. I was checking the mail and uh, he saw me. He's oh you're an Angels fan. I go yeah. He's like oh he's like um, Patrick Sandoval is one of my you know really close friends. I was like oh that's awesome dude. And then uh, he pitched that night and then went to uh, and then they assigned him to Long Beach the next day. Oh wow. Uh, <laughs> that's that's baseball right there. Yeah. Yes sir. All right, so series one, let's do it. This pack's feeling kind of heavy. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ramon Laureano. That's a nice shot. Yeah, super cool. I wonder if he made the catch. One of Kevin's favorites, now a Diamondback, Cole Calhoun. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Lozardo. It's me. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, my A's pack. Oh, yeah. Carlos Correa. Fun to see him strike out recently. <laughs> nice swing. <laughs> it, uh, I, 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 lo I love the thing. It's like yeah. it's hard. It's harder to predict when you don't know what's coming, right? Right. Jose Quintana. I, I, I love the, the, you know, the professional rivalry. Yeah. yeah. Guessing is harder than knowing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, for all of us. Yeah. Uh, James Paxton. Dylan Cease. Get your beers ready, Christian Yelich. Yeah, Yelich. From the MKE, uh, Travis Demerit. Cool, uh, 
That's an awesome one. That must That's be a, a th- that, that must be a short print. It might be because it's uh, who's that one? I get. I'm sorry, I got not focus. Trub- yeah, I yeah no, it, it sucks. Um, see if I can get it closer. That's all right. Yeah, it's like their old uniforms from like. The, yeah, I mean, it's possible. Oh no, it's it's actually the um. I think it's the Negro Leagues uniforms that they're. Having. Oh wow! Very cool. Yeah. We'll have to see later if that's a uh, very a variation card. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Cueto. That aren't numbered. You wouldn't know till you look it up. Johnny Cueto, the uh, the current version of Louis Tiant. And what? Uh, who was that? Uh, what was that uh, card that we think was a short print? What's his name? It is uh, Travis Demerit from the Detroit Tigers. Cleveland Indians. Yeah, because I card? think I think I'm the only one who's gotten one of those so far with a Johnny Bench card. Right. Uh, Otani Shohei. Hey. This is a yeah. decade decade's oh, best. Yeah, so it, this is uh the Jackie Robinson Award. Did we, were we 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 were there for this, weren't we? I think we were. I want to say yes, we were. Yeah, when 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 this was presented, we were there, yeah. and then we took a picture yeah. with it, and I'm sure That's we awesome. put it on our uh, social media. Yes, yes but sir. But this is the, it says uh, Jackie Robinson Award. Yeah, I, that was I, it. Yeah, that's what they call the Rookie of the Year Award now. It's the Jackie Robinson Award. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, were that's really, a, uh, that demerit was uh that's the regular print. Okay. Regular print. All right. Yeah, um, we were actually the last ones to get the photo with that that day. Like we got there, we didn't know it existed. We got there, we took our photos, they cut off the line of the right after us. I know it was yeah, lucky. Kind of close. Yeah, totally. Max Stassi from the Angels. Angel and... Heavy. That was a great pickup. Oh my god, this is this one's a it oh. doesn't look hard, but it is. Adrian Mor Morjon. I'm sure that's not the pronu- <laughs> correct pronunciation for that All right. uh, from the Padres. All right. So let's go to it. Uh, who started? Angelo? Yeah. Yes. George Springer, 330. Yeah. I'm not even close. I have a 298 uh, Hollywood Heroes. Ugh. All Gross. right. Uh-oh. Well. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have that... Adrian Morjon is three forty eight. Carlos oh. Correa three forty nine. Wow. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah. Back to back. Double double whammy. Double whammy. No wins. That'll, no wins. That, that'll be my that'll be my nickname. Double whammy. Double whammy. You'll Shall get one we... point for that though. Uh, Ed Two. brings up that the uh, Bregman Reddick Springer zero and twenty eight against the Dodgers. That's that. Those count. <laughs> hey, it couldn't happen to nicer guys. Oh. All right, series two. All right, Did I say that? I'm, a, I'm a baseball yeah. ambassador. I'm not supposed to yeah. be taking shots yeah. at players. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, series two. Whoop. Uh, you're not this. This was Adam Carolla always got on Dr. Drew for punching his mic. Oh, uh, if you listen to Love Line. So yes. I just I did a similar thing. So feel free to get jump on top of me. You probably heard Angela more than me because I have earbuds on. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's do it series two all right courtesy of chad m thank you so much again army wants to hope that angel has one of the relatives in these wouldn't <laughs> that be great all right not for us <laughs> <laughs> rogue net odor who is famous for punching out uh oh, jose bautista yeah. oh, there you go. of the blue jays yeah our blue jays talk tonight uh, sure. Dylan Moore, uh, Brett Gardner, Ed will like that one. Yeah. Danny Duffy, Justice Sheffield, COVID recipient Paul DeYoung. <laughs> oh man, DeJong. Boy, you know how he feels about that. Oh, God, he's That's so good. good. Just keep, uh, I, I feel Molina. Yikes. Uh, D. Gordon, former Dodger, former yeah. Marlin. It is here with, here with Seattle. Hey, wow, well, his father. Mm. Uh, wait a minute. But who, who, his father is who? Tom Flash Gordon. Tom Flash Gordon. You're right. Yes. Uh, Brian Reynolds. Nicely done, Kevin. Kevin Kramer. 
Mike Miner, Freddie Galvis. Get your beers ready. Josh Haterade. Eight. A bit of a, let's see, it's significant statistics. 1.55. Oh boy, this is a really convoluted. Uh, hate tweet? <laughs> XBA allowed. Uh, I thought it was hate tweets. Expe expected batting average allowed. The likelihood that a batted ball would become a hit regardless of the outcome. Wow. I love baseball has like insane yeah. it, it's statistics like that. Kyle Freeland and Rio Ruiz. Rio Ruiz. Okay. Uh, not to be confused with the woman who won the Boston Marathon by cheating. I think her name is Rosie Ruiz. Look it up. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> I'm live. I can't put it up my ball. I'm not going to show to look this up. Look it up. Who is no. who's next? Will you pick? Uh, I'll go with you, Kevin. Since you're uh, so sassy. Excuse me. You're the you're the host, and you're the current winner. So you know, it's killing my 400 average here. Let's see if I can pick it up a little bit. All right. Uh, from Yost Yankees, Mike Ford. Any relation to Whitey? Hopefully, uh, uh, Ed Brown can let me know on that. Uh, from the Pirates, Jacob Stallings. Ladies and gentlemen, get your beers ready. We have a future stars here from the Brewers, Luis Urias. Nice. I'm going to open up one. Here, take a sip. Oh, ah. oh he didn't explode <laughs> here. And I, I'm not. I'm still drink. I'm being classy, drinking my growler. It's Papa only three. Code Desert Sage coming up. Let's not even enjoy that. All right. Well, here is a former Cardinal for you, uh, Stephen Biscotti. Uh, another Yankee, uh, Giancarlo Stanton. A very popular guy in the Arizona Diamondbacks, Archie Bradley. Blake Snell. We got um, Austin Willie Mays Hayes. That's for Cowboy Jack. Uh, Ryan O'Hearn. Uh, and uh, let's see. Eugenio Suarez. Yep. Ryan McMahon and uh, Bubba Bug, you're gonna love this card and hate this card, and everyone else on the show is gonna hate this card right here, baby. Oh, is that whoa? The no, is it a relic? It's a Brewers relic, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, wow. Low Kane, who just Low opted Kane. out. Just opted out. Uh, let's let's take a big swig for the rental game. That's awesome. Nice pull, Kevin. Well done. Salud. Not for Angelo, not for me. Thank you, thank you, Chad. That's the beauty. Hell of a player. All right. Um, okay, so this 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 presents a dilemma. So yes, I've I've already gone. Let Angelo open up. You're out. Let Angel open it. Shite. Oh, hey, man. you know what? Hey, he has less packs than you and I have of the first series. So I want to try to keep this. You season. don't have to justify it with me. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> the Der Derek Der Rodriguez. Miguel well, Sano. Jake Fraley. Michael Maka. Freddie Galvez. Will Smith, Michael Kopeck, Homer Bailey, Jose Abreu, Brandon Lowe, Luke Weaver. This is a uh, 85 tops Marcus Stroman. Oh, nice. Uh, Reynaldo Lopez and Colby. Allard. So, Michael, I want to make, I want to see what is your high card. <laughs> you just want to like pour I, salt I, to my I, wound. I didn't see. Did I make in the old NFL thing? Like you make the call. I so, the so right we call. we watched the uh, IWA Mid South Deathmatch oh, tournament no. last weekend, and they had this like 
these trap doors that like, you know, all these different things that would like, you know, spo- yeah. like, you know, razor blades and all this other stuff, kind of crazy stuff. But there was one where the, it, they hit it and the light tubes fell and then uh, salt. So if they had a wound, it's salt would go in their wounds. Yes. Oh, geez. That's what you, you just did salt. to me. I hope there's salt going in the you, wound. You, you just hit the trap door with a salt. Yes. Are you, re- are you ready for this? Oh, no. I, I had 684 and 685. Oh, geez. I'm glad I threw you out, at least for now. Okay, I'm not going to win this anyway. Because my high card is only 632. So 680, 685. Oh, would you wait? What would you say? Wow, that would have been our first tie. Yeah. Wow, I killed a tie. You're you killed there. a tie. Yeah. Angela Nicely. Went. So, you know what's funny? I got the relic, but I didn't win today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Because Angela won two, Michael won one. I only won, I won a relic. So, thank you, Chad. Wow, Adam. that was amazing. That's what pack wars are all about. Amazing. And, I just like uh, I just like to boot how the relic was a brewer's relic. And as a brewer's oh, relic. I, I looked at it and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm like, Which means we should all shotgun a beer, right? No, I mean I, I, I'm ready. Oh hell so, yeah. So 17 years ago, maybe. <laughs> uh Ed says uh, Kevin drinking from a jug is awesome. <laughs> and you can't say whitey, fun. Kevin, you're gonna get canceled. I'm going to be canceled for calling the man Whitey Ford. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is his actual name then? Um, let me find uh, what his proper name Cowboy is. Jack says, love you, best chest in the West. Thank you. And Bubble Pug, uh, I love it. Low Kane. Yeah. I, I, like, I was looking like, if I get Lorenzo Kane, I'll have to throw a shout out to Bubble Pug. And there it was. Ra- the Wrath of Kane and Wild Card Relics. Nice. Yeah. Done. Thank you, Chad. You made you made oh. this possible. Absolutely. This Sweet. has been a, a great wrinkle exactly. in this whole thing. That's the beauty right there. Thank you. So nice. All right. Oh, we got trivia so, now. Oof. Let's get to it. Yeah, trivia. This is where you can redeem yourself, Kevin. For I, your I, I think I've for, done all, okay. for all your sins. Oh, there's a lot of sins going <laughs> Mr. Ford Whitey. If I could, I might be able to find an autograph of him before the show goes off the air. I think there's one handy here. And I agree with I agree with Jack. No more pint glasses for Kevin. He's only allowed to drink from a growler. <laughs> I can't even drink from my little uh, angel mug. Oh, that's no, bad. you set a dangerous precedent. I need angel. You know what though? It's a shame. There was an angels growler giveaway this year. Oh, was, that's right. Uh, yeah, there was an angels growler giveaway, which and I think I, was some, I think some they guys, have them. They have them. Oh no, I'm sure they have them. And yeah, I think I'm, some guys that run a beer baseball blog would have been there that night. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Shocking. Hopefully Edward Ford would approve. All right, Ed. <laughs> his name is you. Is that why I have to call him his his name, not his nickname that everyone knows him by? <laughs> Edward Charles Ford. All right. <sighs> okay. Let's do it. Name the two franchises that are two and zero in World Series play. A, Astros and Padres, B, Orioles and Phillies, C, Marlins and Blue Jays, or D, Rockies and Mets. I want uh, comments from everybody that's uh, watching. Give me your uh, guesses here. And don't look it up. You have I, mean, to, like... I, I already know this. Okay. I know it, so I'm not going to – I won't say it. I'll let, I'll let Angela – Wow, look, look at you. Man. Now I think this I is. Think low ha- I'm like I'm most positive I know this answer. This is low hanging fruit. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. If I got in the middle of the teams, and there's also franchises is a bit of a little misdirection, because remember there's like, for instance, the Brewers are also the Pilots. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, Phillies. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, the yeah. Athletics are also like Philadelphia Athletics, so they would be lumped in with that. So the franchises. Astros would be the, the Colt 45s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, but when he's done, I'll explain everything. Don't worry. <laughs> so the only thing I know for sure, it's not A. And the only reason why I know it's not A is when we were doing research for today's episode about Robin Ventura. 
He, uh, we're talking about the White Sox winning a world championship in 05 and they swept the Astros oh. in 05. Yeah. So that eliminates that. So that leaves me with B, C, or D. Man, I could be completely, I'm, I'm probably completely wrong, but I'll go C, Marlins, and Blue Jays. How do I tell him, Michael? How do I tell him that he's completely right on this? Well, because, you, you, yeah. Right. Because, Go I mean, he obviously mentioned A. The Pots are actually 0-2, if I recall, in World Series. Because they lost 84 to the uh, Tigers, and they got swept by the Yankees. <clears throat> I want to say night it's 98 or 99. I can't remember the exact year. Um, I can tell you exactly why the Orioles are not undefeated. Because they actually lost to the Phillies, I believe, in the 83 World Series. Am I actually right on that? Yes. I think we're yes. correct on that. And um, the Rockies didn't win a championship. So that leaves the two times the Marlins won a championship and the two times the Blue Jays won a championship. So it is C. Well, All Angels Podcast, Ed, Bubble Pug, even Jack Durango coming in. Good job, it. Yeah. And, uh, and Chad M. Go with the answer, which is C. The Blue Jays yeah. uh, won in 92 and 93. The Marlins, 97, 2003. Yeah. And uh, the Marlins, after both wins, blew up their teams. Yep. yep. So, yeah. And uh, the Blue Jays had the early part of the 90s. They so, were but, actually really good at the end of the 80s as well. Yeah. A lot oh, of people. They, they were, yeah, they were great. Blue Jays yeah. were right there. It's just that AL East was always tough. That's yeah. an awesome player. So That's right. Team, yeah. Sure. And the Marlins have blown up their teams multiple times since 2003. Yeah. Uh, Trader Jack McKeon. Is that right? They got, <laughs> I, I think they call him Trader. That's why uh, Trader Jack. I was thinking of him being like affiliate of the Padres. But yes, Trader Jack. I think he was. I, 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 I want to say he was involved uh, with the Marlins as well. Could be wrong on that. All right. Name the two franchises that are 0 and 2 in World Series play. A Padres Rangers, B Brewers Rockies, C Rays Padres, or D Rangers and Mariners. Man, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go based on something Kevin said previously. He said the Padres are 0 and 2, so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with A Padres. I already gave away the answer. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize I'll give away an answer here. Because, oh boy! Actually, Padres are in there twice. Yeah, we are in there twice. That's true. Well, I mean, I gave away maybe the answer. We know they're zero and two. Yeah, I'll, I'll, say, I'll stick to A: Padres and Rangers. Cowboy Jack Durango says, "I copy my neighbor's work." Good job. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you for being honest. <laughs> All right. Do I need to go through the full explanation again, Michael. I can't if you want. No, go for it. Go for the it, Mariners, please. C and D are out because the Mariners and the Rays have never been in a World Series. No, the Rock- not the- true. Not the yeah. Rays. The Rays have been in one World Series. Oh, that's true. They lost the one. That's right. I I, I take that back. I take that back. Um, the answer. So they but what the key word one. So that means the answer is a the Padres and the Rangers. So Jack Durango goes to five hundred. <laughs> Bubble Pug goes to five hundred. Mark Viquez, thank you for joining. I, is a all in this podcast, yeah. and with the answer, which is a Padres 1984. If you remember, um, they lost to the Tigers, yes, 98 lost to the Yankees, the well, Rangers, uh, uh, lost to uh, the you Yankees. know, one of them. wait, no, and now come on, I thought, uh, who oh, did no. I? You said well, you meant the Yankees beat the uh, Pods in '98. I thought you meant the Rangers. Like what? No, no. Yankees beat. Yeah, Yankees beat the Padres. So who beat the Rangers? Um, in 2011, it was Cardinals. I know that's uh, all. 2010 I was. Uh, can't remember right now. I was like, like cheat. MLB. Ugh. You think I can do this faster, right? I'm sure someone beat me to this. Uh, San Francisco. Oh, it does an even year. Oh, that's right. That's right. When I started in the even year thing, I got it. That's so, yeah. yeah. Mark Viquez, uh lost to the San Francisco and yeah. St. Louis. That's right. Very good. 
we, yeah, so we need some we, we need someone to go back in the archives because I have a I have a really strong feeling that Cowboy Jack's answers for every question is C. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll have to we'll have to do some research and see if that's true. Well, I I I have a a, a possibility, but I can't say it here on the on a family friendly show. <laughs> oh, okay. All, right. All Angels podcast says Nelson Cruz uh, outfield error. Uh, was it a, no? It wasn't an error. It was. It was a. Error. I was a misplay. I would say yeah. he definitely should have caught that ball, but it wasn't an error. But you're you're right. That was exactly. It was a uh, uh, freeze. Hit that a triple. And then he hit the home run. Actually, the the Rangers should have won that series because Josh Hamilton homered. Uh, to take the lead in extra innings. Mm -hmm. So that was an amazing series. Amazing series. All right. So that is the show for tonight. Um, Definitely. uh, Thank you. Please like, and subscribe. Tell everybody about this show. We've been doing it for 14 weeks. I don't see any momentum slowing up. This is all of our social media. Please uh, follow. uh, And we will definitely start posting some more. I know that I've been very remiss because I've been very concentrated on this show uh, in getting it uh, to where I think that we've we've gotten it. There's a lot of work that goes into this. Uh, Kevin. Yes, whoa. sir. Oh, my whoa. God. I get this. They're screaming. They, they, I'm like, whoa. No, they're Kevin. Oh, they're so excited. It's like Beatlemania over there. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's Beatlemania here at the Beer Baseball Blog pod, Podcast. Do you have any uh, plugs for tonight? As, I mean, I usually say if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you can find me at Lock and Lull. That's L O K N L O L L. See what I'm getting into. And I usually plug every week. I get my beer every week for the broadcast from Red Beard's Tap Room in Anaheim, walking distance of Angel Stadium, and the well, what's the fun called now? The Honda Center. Once everything reopens, check it out. You can park there or get beer. They have 40 craft beers on draft. It's great. If you want to go have a beer right now, you can go over there. They're open seven days or six days a week. They have a little outdoor patio. You can hang out and have a beer. I wanted to acknowledge uh, David. Uh, thank you for an ep- another episode. Uh, see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Mark Viquez uh, had his podcast tonight too. So we look forward to listening to that. All right. Uh, Angelo, any uh, plugs? Hey, episode 14, guys, we couldn't uh, we couldn't do this without your guys' support and viewership. Uh, so we, we've come a long way since the pilot episode. So happy to be a part of this. Um, if you guys get an opportunity, um, go visit your local uh, card shop tomorrow. Uh, Tops Luminaries 2020 is released. That's one of Michael's favorite uh, oh, yeah. series. Um, and that's dropping tomorrow. You've seen, you can go back in the archives and look at some of his uh, unboxings and He's gotten three one of ones from between 2018 and 2019. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm uh, on hall of fame baseball cards. They have a card break starting at four, uh, 4 PM uh, California time. So uh, I might have uh, a, a, a couple picks in there. So I'm going to actually start out and actually support hall of fame baseball cards in Arcadia, California, HOFBC.com. So definitely uh, look for that on YouTube and check them out and support a small business. So Angelo, Kevin, thank you so much for another great episode. We will see you not at the brewery, not at the stadium, but we'll see you here back next week, 6 p.m. every Tuesday. Thank you so much. We love you. Peace and good night.